So thanks, thanks for coming, guys. And um, I know some guys will be busy this week. So what we can do is we can cover absolutely anything. There were some questions that came up last week. I think Steve's got one. Um, and there's just other little things that um, that we could just pr- kind of just kind of hammer out, and um, we could talk about the progress of where uh, the game of the month would go, and um, we could uh, bounce some ideas off you guys and and see what you think about that. So, um, so uh, let me get started just with it with the game of the month, so, since we're this right on top of my head. So. The idea was just to kind of like get people playing the same scenario and then just discussing the same scenario and then um uh just to just to grow variety because um, i know a lot of guys have just played scenario sk1 i don't have the expanded you know there's a lot of extra scenarios out for starter kit so but i don't have right. all those scenarios and so um you know i couldn't pick uh you know there might be better scenarios instead of just the generic six or whatever like that plus the ones mmp has right. mm-hmm. So that's all I have, but I didn't want to be really boring and just stick on those six scenarios. Um, so I just kind of said, well, you know, you know, everyone started it here and everyone's got different levels. Let's just kind of, you know, you know, for, for fun, just, you know, go start at one and then start at two and then start at three and then start at four. Since they have the rules available for those, maybe we should have had like a half hour, or one hour primer just on guns, just the base, just the bare basics. I mean, they should read the right. rules anyway. But maybe mm-hmm. little things like the tips and tricks, like, okay, make sure that if you're in a building, if you turn, it's like double. And I've seen a lot of guys apply the doubling, so it doesn't seem to be a problem yeah. for that. Yeah. And that's the biggest, I got to be honest, pretty much guns, they just sit there and fire, and you just kind of roll dice, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes calculating the critical hits pretty hard, but, uh, you know, when everything's in stone buildings, you're really not going to get a critical hit unless you roll snake eyes. So, um, so, but... But but it still it still <laughs> it still exists. I can't hit anything in buildings, so <laughs> so I can't hit. It's funny you mentioned that because uh, Steve, Steve B's on, and both of us got critical hits when we played each other at the uh, <laughs> Legio Patria Nostra this past uh, past month. So uh, oh, that's hilarious. That, that was funny. That's so. hilarious. But yeah, it, it does happen, and uh, if for whatever reason, it just it just happens. So and then and yeah. then armor as well. I think somebody made a comment. Um, in the discord server about oh i got time to get ready to prime up for the armor and um what i did was i just kind of directed them to the clash of borosovka that we had done right. and uh yeah. the early battles because the early battles uh, replay with george because george is a brand new player so mm-hmm. and since he was a brand new player i was excited to go over that game with him even though it was it was kind of slow but that wasn't the point of playing it fast the point was trying to get all the modifiers out and things which people you know what, what you need to look at um it wasn't a perfect game by any means in terms of you know technical stuff going on but for the most part you kind of get the gist of doing armor you know it's got infantry firepower equivalent it's got breakdown some vehicles right. had low breakdown they had smoke dischargers the use of smoke um the difficulty of fighting a giant tank that you can't kill um it had a little gun in it you know the 76 infantry i think the infantry artillery piece you know yes. and mm-hmm. atrs and things like that so it's got the whole gamut of what you need to do with armor and um pretty much i tried to i tried to show um sort of like the same clash of borosovka like i, I drove into a, the woods and i think i had you or somebody else drive into a building you know um right mm-hmm. and then and then experience that you know you're gonna take a ball roll but Hey, you get the plus two for the building. It's just like you're moving all the time, but you're not. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he missed you a couple of times before the building because of the building. So it's important to not just um, go in open ground. There's a lot of instances where you might only want to move one hex. And if you bog, who cares? If that's where you need to be, it doesn't matter yeah. whether you're moving or not, you know. Um, so it also helped that I wound up being mired rather than just bogged. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so you know little things like, basement, so. yeah little things like that if you don't intend to be moving if that guy doesn't have to be off the board in one or one or two turns put him there and he's the one that's going to be dishing out the damage you know um and so and uh, it's okay to bog because you know getting out of bogs really not too bad i mean it's just going to be blowing up a whole bunch of mps but who cares but um but that extra plus one it's essentially like especially for the germans when they're ce it essentially makes them button up 
I mean, um, that that's an equalizer. You know, if you, if the Russians are in woods and the Germans aren't, there's your equalizer, at least in terms of sh- kind of short range, because the Russians use red to hit numbers. But mm-hmm. every plus helps. Every plus helps, especially the mid range, and um, so just little things like that. And, um, and that's probably what I'll do. I mean, obviously, I'm mentioning it here. Is that uh, anybody want, that wants to run over those primers? Um, those are really good things to look at, and it will give you something to do over the holidays. You know, watch watch those on double speed or whatever like that. I watch, I pro- pretty much watch everything on double speed now. And um, you know, if the people speak really fast, then I'll kick it down to one five. And um, and that way, yeah. you know, I watch movies at double speed, especially if it's like a little mini drama. I mean, you could follow it for the most part, and um, so it's not that bad. But uh, but uh, we could talk. I about think your early battles uh, video was one of the first uh, of your replays I ever saw. Wow! And that that was one because I remember you saying like this is a little bit of everything. This is as your entire combined arms uh, thing. You've got uh, armor, you got infantry, you got artillery, you got got the whole thing going on. Yeah. One one spot. And um and it's good because it it, it shows you how to use, you know, both sides have very important pieces. It's not just like all t-34s you know you got the 75 the panzer fours and the panzer twos and um what you use them for uh uh is completely different and um and the russians the same thing they got that giant tank but he can't he can't chase things down (laughs) he's too slow and uh you know that's why i kind of like i mean we play that scenario and i've seen other people play it and uh, you know it's kind of cool because you know based on your setup you could experience a lot of different things in that game and um Plus, I love the KV-2. It's just, just a monster of a tank. You know, it's just a good big gigantic juggernaut just cruising around and everyone's avoiding it. So, um, but, uh, and, and then you can just switch sides. You know, one side's got more. I know I've told you this story, but uh, do you know who uh, Derek Ritter is? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I was playing him uh, in the early battles. And uh, with the KV-2, I got a critical hit on both of his Panzer IIs. Oh. So, that, That's that, crazy. that was interesting. That's crazy. I'm not gonna play you, John. You get critical hits every single game. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> so uh but but yeah, it's um you know, exciting things like that happen, you know, all the time. And um you know, and experiencing those and you're looking, you know, looking them up and if you if you're unfamiliar with critical hits, just you know you know, just, just look it up, see what happens. You know, with armor it's pretty simple. With infantry it's a little it's a little tricky. I have to recalculate it every single time. I mean, I couldn't tell you verbatim the exact rule of critical infantry. It's like, you know, the, it's like the final to hit, modified to hit number and things like that. So it's kind of awkward in terms of number finicky, finickiness. Um, and it's not kind of straightforward to some other things, but it's all right. You know, it's everyone's excited to get a critical hit. And, and if you screw it up, if you calculate it wrong, you know, it, it doesn't matter as long as you're, as long as you consistently do it that way and, and, and whether it's right or wrong. I think I think it's okay because it's close. It's pretty close either way. I mean, technically there's a difference, but I don't really think it's it's a big deal. You're all snake eyes, something like that. And you're kind of excited about that, but yeah. But pretty much, you know, if you get point blank, is where a lot of the critical hits can apply versus infantry. Like if you have an infantry gun, because like I say, the, the if they're in cover, it's just the modifiers are so high. But but uh, but yeah, I'd, um, we finished the. Uh, now, do you guys watch any of the ASL stuff? Did you guys, or did you guys kind of watch the Tactical Tuesday and the Starter Kit? Because I don't really play any Starter Kit ones anymore. And I mean, I know you guys are playing, but I just kind of wonder what your what your ASL f- taste is. Is what what you do with ASL when you don't play? Do you do you come on? You watch other guys? I'm, or... I'm starting. I'm I'm starting to lean that way a little bit because uh, you know there's only probably about. Any one time I'm on Vassal, the it's probably about uh, one game out of one or two games out of twenty, you know, that are going to be SK. And so mm-hmm. I'm starting to uh, watch a little bit of uh, Vassal, just excuse me, uh, ASL, just to sort of uh, prime myself for what I'll eventually move into. Okay. Of course, I don't see that happening in a couple of, in a couple of years. Steve, what's your thought? I mean, are you are you doing kind of the same thing, or do you play ASL in addition to SK? So I haven't played any ASL yet. I do watch a lot of the videos that you do post those two. Um, I have the rule book and I have a couple of the core modules, but I'm, I, I'm still obviously learning through the SK system. 
so I aspire to move to ASL. So I watch and, you know, I, I try to remember things and, and see how the differences are. Right. Yeah. Now, do you, do you listen in? Do you, do you seek to try to seek them out to see if they're actually in a room? Most players are not, which is, um, which is, Oh, which is, uh, which is too bad to be honest with you. I mean, if they were in a room, then people like you and John, um, if you, like you say, if you're interested, you got the stuff and, it's it's hard to know what they're talking about and um but you'll see them move but sometimes you know things will happen in their move which which are not exhibited and uh i mean sure you could follow some action but especially right. if you're if you're if you're trying to make a move you're trying to learn uh, i always try to look like i don't even care if I, I what i do is i usually jump on discord and i find um rooms that people are in and then i go to vasil and of course i'll be on vasil at the same time and then try to find that room just so right. I can listen to them. And so, because, um, you know, most of the guys are pretty friendly and they don't mind you popping in and things like that. And um, um, most of the time I just mute myself and I just listen. Usually they're usually at the tail end, you know, because about six or seven, eight o'clock at night, they're usually at the tail end, you know, if they're Easterners. And, uh, but hey, it's okay. I, like a half turn, not a big deal. You just want to, you're just chilling. You're just chilling with the guys and just watching some guys play some ASL while they're chatting about, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of ASL, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, but the yeah. The last, uh, last opportunity I had to listen in on a game uh, of ASL was uh, Chris Anthony was playing somebody. It was the it was the dead of winter scenario where you had uh, oh. the Russians uh, going after some uh, stuff in the deep snow. And that, that was a lot of fun to watch. And it was... Uh, uh, I forget exactly who won that, but it was uh, one of those that came down to the close combat phase of the last turn. Oh my goodness! You know? It oh was goodness. it was pretty interesting. Yeah. But, the, uh, uh, go ahead. Obviously, a few things I don't uh, fully uh, understand is how uh, entrenchments work. You know, both uh, are the entrenchments laid out in the scenario and the entrenchments you can actually do during the game. I saw one of your replays where you were. Uh, explaining how you were going to basically dig an entrenchment system, you know, right down the center of this runway. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> prevent the Japanese from uh, taking it over and also provide a covered uh, lane of access between point A and point B, yeah. you know, within your defensive scheme and going, damn, that'd, that'd be pretty useful. So, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, they always call uh, entrenchments um, like death traps, you know, oh, you can't, you can't move yeah. out of it. It's like, well, I mean, think. I, I I simply think that they are using the entrenchments improperly, um, and putting an entrenchment in a in, in the trees is kind of like you really don't need to because if your guys are entrenched, they're in a fortified position, and so if you're in a fortified position, you're not coming and going like a drive-through at you know McDonald's. Right. You're there. You're firing until you break, and then you rot away. But these guys, they because because they can't skulk from that position is what the problem is. Um, I guess they could technically, but um, it's just you know I remember playing the old squad leader series and I'd be digging entrenchments all over the place simply because it's a plus. You're you're putting up a wooden building anywhere in the map, anywhere in the map for for the most. Of it. There's some restrictions, but you're putting it wherever you want to and. Um, there's some advantages and disadvantages for it, of course, but, you know, um, especially like in that particular scenario you saw, John, you know, if, if I put, you know, a lot of guys will put an entrenchment, if they're given an entrenchment in their OB, they'll put it between buildings so they can route from one side to the other. Yeah. Us yes. Usually that never, that never kind of comes to fruition. Um, and um, also, uh, I've learned that you never want to put your entrenchments where your opponent can use them. So if, if, if you should happen to you have your guys up in the front line and they yeah. get destroyed because that's what they're there for is there to be there to slow them down as much as possible, they're going to get destroyed. You don't want the other guy coming in and using it against you. As long as that, that, that entrenchment's out of LOS, you're fine. Like, like in this scenario here, um, if, you, if you guys are, uh, have synced to the room, um, with entrenchments, there's some LOS, there's some LOS things that go along with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, let's say you have, let's say you have the Germans 
up in here and if you put an entrenchment like an n3 you know most people won't do it they'll usually put it behind it again it's just depending on what you do uh, oh, i'm sorry let me find an entrenchment i know i've got one please tell me i got one around here yep there it is so let's let's say you've got an entrenchment here and you've got uh this machine gun guy and i'm just gonna put him on top so he's in the trench he's technically the you know he's there double click him you can double click him and it will expand it so this is i think this is the a proper way to use an entrenchment um let's say you've got an entrenchment here and let's say you've got a guy behind it so the entrenchment is going to give you plus two and the wall for this guy is going to give you plus two right so the guy behind the wall is going to be exposed to this tank down here but that's okay let's just say they're defending on this area over here if this guy were to break right he can then route back he could come out and over in the same time so when you're routing from a foxhole you get to add the the movement it takes to get out of the foxhole into the next hex so he could route there safely as if we were just like right here just jumps over the wall and then he can go back to wherever okay. he needs to go but when the enemy comes up to here let's say the brits make their advance right and they get to this position the germans are back here and let's say you get to their advance here if you're in the foxhole next to a a wall you know, wall, hedge, bocage, whatever, right? They don't have LOS mm -hmm. past that wall if they're in the entrenchment. So he, this guy here can't see anybody that might be over here, even the broken unit, even this guy. You can see them when they're adjacent, but P4 and entrenched units in N4 do not have LOS to one another. So at that point, you use the foxhole for your advantage, but let's say he beat you up and he pushed you back like that, he doesn't get to use it you know, on the assault over here. Obviously, he could use it on this side because, you know, the, the wall doesn't cover that hex side there. But let's just say he was going for this victory point. He couldn't use it against you. And that's where a lot of players, um, uh, they just, they just do, they, they'll do something like this. They'll just put like an entrenchment right here so they can route from here to here. Well, if that's the point back there, you know, the game's probably going to be over you know, mm -hmm. plus your eight morale units. I mean, if you can't take an eight morale check on a on a interdiction, you know, th is that a risk? That's not really a big risk. It's it's not a big deal at all. Um, you could fail it, sure, but you know who cares? Um, you know, if you got a blown up tanks like this, it's going to you know cause loss of uh, you know he won't be able to interdict you in that location anyway. So um, I think a lot of times they'll waste it like that. Whereas um, I remember one scenario. Let's say. Uh, let me move this stuff out of the way right here. So you've got this building here, right? And let's say, let's say you play this scenario a couple times, and you know the Brits are going to be up in this location here, right? What I would do is I would put a foxhole between the buildings, so so I could have a squad here, a squad here, and then a squad here in the middle. They're all in plus two, right? And a it it gives them ability to move between the buildings in the route phase, mind you. And mm -hmm. it allows them to fire group a much larger fire group instead of something like this, instead of something like this, where I can't really do, this is a split fire group. I mean, it's, you get six and eight firepower. What, what good does that do? If this is here and this guy's got a machine gun here, now what do you got? You got like, uh, that's a six, 12, 18, that's a 16 firepower. You essentially wow. doubled your firepower. You went from eight to 16 in one shot. And, and you know, you just fire the middle guy and guess what? He breaks, right? And now he's looking at the, the reduced firepower charge, the four and six. So um, you don't see this a lot either. And, uh, you know, there's so much things like, you know, don't, never stack, you know, stacking, you prep fire and you're losing. Yeah, I mean, those are all nice little fine and dandy catchphrases. Um, do they apply? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they apply in some cases, but sometimes you got to prep fire. Sometimes you have to stack. Sometimes you got to run a stack of units somewhere because uh you know let's say they're conscripts and they don't have very many movement factors you know you might need to stack some guys with a leader as long as you're moving them safely there's not a big deal and then at the end of the turn you advance you know spread out if you're getting near the front you know in the advance phase and then if you need to get back together then then do it later but um you know you obviously don't want to be running a stack down the middle of the road i mean it's pretty much common sense but um oh yeah but uh even in static defenses of, of stacking units like I, I would never do this i mean i just first of all i can't you know my my fire charts on 16 in one shot is just garbage anyway and um i, I just like a little bit more versatility 
And plus, if he gets a lucky shot, like if he, if he plays one of you guys that gets a crit on him, then all these guys are gone. And guess what happens? The floodgates are open. You know, these guys, I mean, you lose them all at that point. And that's, that, that's yeah. where we just go back to all of our, our, all of our routing things where if you got all your eggs in one basket, they're going to blow up. Um, I probably wouldn't put more than two squads in a location uh, if it weren't a stone building or, uh, or out of line of sight for that matter. Um, right. I, I just, I just, I don't, I, what you get, I mean, let's, let's say you put just the, the extra squad here. What's he going to give you? He's going to give you one more column, right? It goes from a, let's say a 12, let's just say that was a medium right here. I don't have a medium on these guys. I don't have it. That's all. Oh, there you go. This guy's got an ATR. So it goes from a 12 to a 16. Big deal, right? It's one more chart over. At, at that point, you know, you're looking at a plus two over here. Any seven is going to get a one morale check. And if you fire from the 16, it's going to be the same morale check. So why risk the other squad where he could be over here with his LMG? Um, and just in, what the hell's going on here? Uh, just in case, you know, these guys break. You know, let, let's say these guys break one of these guys or the guy on the edge over here. Let me take exactly here. Let's say he breaks this guy on the edge. What can this guy then do safely? He can move right here because that's a wall. And so, mm -hmm. so if this guy fires on him, he gets better for the wall, which is like a, 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 a building. And so now he can get right on top of this guy and then he could advance fire at six, six, essentially. Well, in ASL, he'll have a wall advantage. So he won't even get the wall. That'll be a six even, which is much more effective. So, um, you know, you, you give up one column, but you give you get the ability to actually put lots of pressure on your opponent. You know, whether you're defending or attacking or things like that. So, in another scenario that I was working on, um, uh, crap, it's a uh, round two in the Sioux City one. I was planning on to um, having my guys sort of like do sort of like in P three, like what I described earlier. I was I, I would I, I had planned to have one of my guys go here because he's Russian because they need a six to make a foxhole. And then during his turn, I was going to have him try to create a foxhole, so he creates this situation. So, um, because later in the game, that's that was going to be a, a key point of combat, you know, if it came to that. It didn't come to it, but I had that in my mind that that's an option. As long as you know the options available to you, then you just evaluate them as, as the game progresses. You may not need them, or you, you damn well need them probably two turns ago. And now you're behind the eight ball. You know, maybe he broke on, he broke through a side or something like that. And now it's like, oh crap, I can't get there because you know I just, I'm just up against the back, you know, up against the back wall. And that's just something that you have to evaluate as a player. And um, and uh, as you evaluate that, and make your decisions. You'll say how your decisions come to fruition or fail, for that matter. And then um, you just take that into your next game. And then also take take into consideration not only your actions. But what your opponent did to um, either allow you to do that or disallow you to do that. So it's, um, you know, you learn from both sides. Learn from your mistakes and you learn from your opponent's mistakes or triumphs on both sides, you know. Take hey, Stu? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Have you ever uh, have you ever managed to get a prisoner to dig a foxhole for you? That's one of my all time ASL life <laughs> goals. But uh, never, never made it happen yet. Funny that you mentioned that. Wow. If... Um, uh, I played Dennis Donovan. It is uh oh geez, it's the it's the one with the woods. The one with the woods. Oh yeah, I know uh, that one. It's a, if you look on the <laughs> if you look on the little thing on my channel, uh, it'll be like wandering in the woods or walk in the woods, something like that. Oh, okay, it's, it's a big it's on you. Okay, yeah, I captured a whole shitload of units, and I, matter of fact, I screwed up the 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 foxhole rule completely. I mean, just completely obliterated it. I mean, don't don't learn to dig foxholes by that example of that game. Because um, I've been playing a lot of starter kit, and pretty much I forgot how to dig a foxhole. I mean, that's like a thirty-year rule that you shouldn't forget. But um, but it was just really weird uh, in that aspect. But yeah, I tried to I tried to get the I, you know I added up all the modifiers differently. But um, yeah, I tried to get the, the the prisoners to dig foxholes because at that point, if you look in that particular game, the execution was just botched. But the but the idea behind it, if you guys want to take a look at that, it's like near the end. You'll see where the prisoners start showing up. I don't think it's in the first session; it's in the next one. Again, watch a double speed, and you'll see where I've got it, just stacks of prisoners, and then you'll see a couple foxholes pop open. Um, one of them is like at a junction, like a road junction in the middle of the woods that could cover like an area, 
And so pretty much I put like a wooden building. It's only one squad capacity, obviously, but I put the wooden building right there. And, um, but, uh, but it goes, but then it adds a whole bunch of rules, like about how many prisoners can be in there. And, and so we had to look up stuff like that. Luckily it didn't really, really come down to it. Now, like I said, don't, don't look at that particular example in terms of how to create foxholes because I screwed it up completely. Um, just, just nice. if, well, at least you got to do it. I have, I have yet to uh, yeah, yeah. Get, get prisoner. It seems like usually by the time you have the prisoners, it's a little late to start digging. But, yeah, uh, yeah. When well, the know. conscripts, you yeah. know, in that particular one, it's and it was a pretty, pretty short scenario to be honest with you. But um, yeah. clearance Somebody, rolls too, right? You know, if there's if there's right? a roadblock yeah. that you need cleared or something like that, yeah. and get them, to, them work. to work. You get those little bastards yeah. to work. And uh, someone told me about about a scenario where you start with a bunch of prisoners and oh, wow. uh he said that's a good one to do some of that stuff and yeah, so practice look, that stuff. look that one up yeah, yeah. like in the foxholes each each individual each individual unit rolls but like let's say if you're doing like a, a task like you want to clear a roadblock then you or push a gun you know i think they could be used to pushing a gun i'm not sure they could do like five or six different tasks but but in those other tasks the number of prisoners you have increases the likelihood of you be getting it done. Like if you have a half squad, it's minus one, a full squad's minus two of prisoners. And if you have other squads, you know, if you have three squads of prisoners, that's like a minus six. Well, pretty much you're going to get anything done at minus six. So um, definitely look into that and uh, and getting those guys done. But digging foxholes again, I, I completely botch. It's each each individual one. So, but um, I don't even think they could help you dig a foxhole to be honest with you. So, but uh. I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I guess they could entrench, but um, but but like, do they go in the foxhole? Do you go in the foxhole? Since you're not the one entrenching, uh, I'd have to look at it again. Uh, but all I know is I messed it up bad. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, it didn't come uh, come into play. But uh, but it was a fun little scenario. It was um, it was a firefight scenario from the firefight series. It's got its own little board. It's only specific board for that one scenario. It's a tight little fight. Um. You know, if you guys aren't familiar with it, pretty much you could use starter kit rules in that particular game. I got to be honest with you. Um, uh, it's just infantry, infantry, a couple support weapons, and a couple special rules, which are just, you know, just read the special rules. They just, you know, and uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, just just infantry fight and, uh, you know, punching people in the face. A little bit of concealment. Once you guys, once we get through um, starter kit four, um, and uh, we'll go over some concealment rules in that because it's very important to understand the concealment rules and how they apply to certain things. And then we can go into that sort of thing. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, so hopefully <clears throat> next month we'll, um, next month we're going to pick a, an armor scenario. Uh, I think Scott, I think you mentioned a particular armor scenario you might be interested in. I think it's an exit one. So, it seems like most of the armor scenarios in starter kit are either exit or you know there's like two victory conditions that go along with the armor. Uh, so I'm, uh, I don't I didn't see any of them that had to do with casualty victory points like on the board. Um, yeah. So I think they I, I think they kept it simple. Yeah, I, I've, um, got some, I've got some from uh, the rally point series. Uh, Evan Sherry out of Tampa. He's uh, put together a couple of packs, and uh, I've done up some boards. Uh, I would, with the anticipation that I was actually going to get to vehicles one of these days, you know, just one or two on e either side. And um, if you want to take a look at those, absolutely. I'd be happy to share them, to share them with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are those are cool. I actually had, uh, I don't know if you, I came in a little late, so I don't know if you had something you were about to discuss, but uh, I had a, a, a scenario that I was playing this weekend uh, and, uh, I think Steve was was watching a good portion of it. Uh, I was playing with Tony F, and it was one of those rally point uh, trouble with tigers. Um, it was a kind of an interesting tactical situation that I was uh, going to ask for some feedback on if you uh, if you had uh, time to look at that, or I don't know if you had something else you were. But yeah, let's uh, if you if you got it, if you could fire it up, and then we could take a look. Uh, at yeah, it. cool. Uh, yeah, I got it loaded up. Uh, and so you guys can sync. All right. Sync yeah. with me. Uh, so this is uh, Rally Point 20, which is uh, Trouble with Tigers. Um, and uh, I, I, I really like these Rally Point scenarios because the, you can play them starter kit rules or full ASL, ASL rules. Really? Uh, and back when I was first 
starting out with starter kit, uh, you know, I played some and then it was fun to go back and play with full rules and, and see how they changed. And, wow. uh, so this one, Tony and I were playing, so we were playing starter kit. Um, and I'm actually lined up to play it again, uh, with full rules in a couple of days, I think with another guy, but, um, but, uh, I've been trying to, I've been trying to do more, uh, attacking afe attacking just because i figured out that i'm terrible at it and uh <laughs> you know often just struggle with kind of coming up with a basic plan and uh this situation came up that seems like a kind of a common somewhat common one where he's so he's he's got two uh two big guns uh somewhere out there uh oh, right. they basically could be anywhere uh there's this he's normally sets up on the two uh um what is it is it southern i don't know the two bottom, bottom boards let's say, bottom let's boards. say the okay. two bottom boards yeah uh and uh but he can set up uh i forget what it was i think three up to three mmcs uh and any leaders guns or support weapons with them uh on board x in greater than or equal to hex row four Oh um, right, okay. So you get three so, guys you know, anywhere they on that basically board. Basically, could all be fields. yeah, right. And they're they're one twenty two L's uh, artillery guns, so they can punch through anything, uh, even the uh, the King Tiger's uh, frontal armor could, wow. uh, with a turret hit, only with a turret hit um, on the King Tiger. Um, so, so the one twenty twos uh, have a twenty five to kill number. It's yeah, twenty five. Yep. Yeah, so on a turret player. hit, they've got eighteen on the on the turret for the yeah. King Tiger. So, so, killable. Yep. so basically, it's, it's you know about a twenty five percent chance to take out a King Tiger ish. You know, so I think you know depending on the two hit, but say right. you know seven or eight on the two hit, and then if it's if it's a turret hit, uh, then about a twenty a fifty percent chance to kill it. Right. Um, so uh, and he has two of those guns, but, correct? Yeah, it's two of them. Yeah. yeah. So. Right. Uh, so I was, you know, a little bit, you know, so, so one of the big questions for me always is, you know, uh, obviously using the combination, uh, the infantry and the, the, the tanks in combination uh, to support each other and, you know, different situations where, you, you know, you want one to be pushing forward more um, and, you know, et cetera. But in this one, so the, the, uh, the victory conditions are to get down to the bottom board and, and to take... Uh, to take control of those uh i think it's four out of four out of five or four out of six of those multi-hex buildings that are marked uh with victory points uh with victory symbols um so it's a long way to go but you got not you know eight and a half turns to to do it in um and so my initial thought when i saw a setup was to kind of try to get you know to since the guns can kind of be anywhere i was not you know, I, I didn't have feel like I had time to kind of do too much probing with the infantry to try to figure out where they were. Um, I liked, uh, you know, I usually like putting my guns in orchards because you can keep them concealed, but you know, don't suffer the doubling penalty for um, for rotating. So the orchards or the grain down here seemed like a good potential spots. Right. Um, but but anyway, my plan was kind of. Bring bring the the armor on and up forward a bit to mostly to kind of cut off his infantry and keep it over on this side, and then exploit this kind of undefended uh, side over here to right. move my infantry through. Uh, that was basically the plan. I, what I one thing I didn't think too carefully about was, you know, that that was uh, gonna you know end up putting me on the wrong side of the. Uh, the town you know i would be over here uh, and still need to move over to the other side but right. it seemed like i had enough time to to get there maybe yeah. uh so anyway so i went started uh going let's go so oh this is a log file okay it starts yeah <laughs> nice, so it, start, okay. <laughs> it nice. starts off real interesting uh so he right away he so he he's got a gun up here uh he puts it out in the open so as soon as i'm in line of sight of it uh i you know i see it and i'm like oh shit there it is <laughs> um so uh 
you know, spent a little time thinking about what I wanted to do and decided to, um, to, uh, to go for smoke with that guy. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, when he could see me, when he couldn't. So he was trying to decide did he want to take that shot then or not. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, uh, so I, so I got the smoke, um, and then skedaddled out of there. Right. Uh, so, so I guess, so kind of the first, my first question for the, the group would be, you know, okay, the whole, uh, you know, your plans last until <laughs> contact with the enemy. <laughs> uh, so we're contact <laughs> with the big enemy. And so, you know, what, how would you adjust, uh, you know, or what, what would you be thinking now? Uh, you know, what, what would you, what would your, your, how would you alter the plan and how, you know, what would you start thinking about on how to, how to deal with this? Because I really was struggling to come up with a good, okay. a good plan. So, and I'll, I'll show you what I ended up doing. All right. So when, not great. when did you, I'm sorry, did you come straight down the N row or M five? Was that the first location that he saw you in? Yeah. Uh, I think we decided that, so I think he could see me. I think, so I think I came in M uh, and then moved over to come down this way. All right. And so I think he saw me, uh, you know, yeah. around N4. Okay. So I think he'd only seen me for two. Um, and so, and then the smoke, and then I got the, as soon as he, uh, you know, popped, popped the gun up. Um, I think basically, I think what he said is, I think what, I can't remember. I think basically he should have shown me the gun here. Because that was, I think that was where he, uh, right. maybe that was Yeah, I just checked the LOS. It's, it's blocked in, um, it's blocked in M7. So, yeah. So, given yeah, that, so, so you saw the gun and everybody in your tank had smelled this, like, just stench of shit in their pants. Right. And then they, and then, <laughs> and then they ran to M6. Um, where were you going yeah. to move the tank when you were driving it down there? Let me ask you that. Yeah, so my original plan was basically to put it here, uh, ish, uh, okay. and then uh, and do go what for with so, it. So you know, well, one so one of the things I, I've got going for me in this scenario is that all of my tanks have good smoke exponents. Both, right. uh, you know, the uh, the the um, they all have good smoke dispensers, and then the uh, 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 Panzer IVs have uh, good smoke can main armament smoke as well. Um, so my plan was to, my plan was to come here and uh, my, uh, actually, I think, I think I was originally thinking I might come down and, and get, use a smoke dispenser to, to cover, um, you know, in, in the next turn, um, to cover the infantry. My goal, you know, I wanted to get the infantry into these trees and then figured I'd have, uh, try to you know what whatever uh, infantry he moved over the tanks could support their their push uh, right. through this area um and you know maybe in prep fire uh have this this guy parked here and then you know smoke out one of these hexes if he's still got a guy there okay um something okay. like that was the basic idea okay that's cool so um so the 447 um yeah, all depends on what, what you want the other guys to do. Now, now you have your other tanks coming on here, because um, I didn't know it looked like, it looked like your covered arc was headed to the right hand side. Um, would it been safe for you? I'm not saying what you did was wrong, but would it be safe for you to continue to O six? And well, well, you wanted to go down here, so essentially you didn't want to go forward anymore, and that's fine. But um, again, like you say, cha plans change. So um, an O six move. That would have been what? How much would he have had to, to hit you at that point? The essentially the N five and the O six would have been. What's the to hit on that? So yeah, it would have been plus. It would have been plus one because he would have seen me for two, and then plus two for a moving target, so plus three, and then probably at that range, it's a for the Russian gun, it'd probably be a base of eight, I would think. Uh, let's uh, see. That's fire phase. Let's see. Hornets to hit yeah. seven to twelve. Yeah, he'd be at eight. Uh, oh, limited aim less than or equal to two. Less than or equal to two movement points and LOS of target is plus two. So you'd have a plus four shot on you there. He'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
nine hex range, so he's going to have a what a base nine on that. Uh, well, he'd have a base eight because the his base his base is his base to hit number is going to be uh, red, yeah. unmodified to hit yeah, is going to be right. eight. Uh, one twenty two L doesn't get yeah right. nothing else. So, at that so range. He, he would need a four to hit you there, and um, and so whether he takes that shot or not, uh, I don't know. But uh, I I I might not take a four. But again, I didn't know which direction you would go. Um, it, let's say you were still going to go to the right, just for instance, for shits and giggles. Um, any of these locations here would be fine. Um, you know, even driving, dr even driving into the stone building would be fine. Um, I mean, it might bog you down, but it would give you a shot on this guy in case he was going to kind of come over this way. But if you wanted to bring your tank this way, then um, yeah. Well, I figured these guys were going to be able. They, I figured these guys would come in, uh, that you know, come in that way. Um, so, but uh, so this guy here, what do you think you want to do with him? Could, do you want him drive him around here, or what other options I mean, do you that, have? Well, yeah, I mean, well, originally that was the plan, but then you know, in the face of this gun, I didn't want to give him, uh, you know, even a. A four or five. I mean, it's an auto. It's a. It, it's a hit kill. If yeah. he hits me, he's yeah, killing yeah. me. So, uh, so you know. Uh, and and I wanted. I, mm -hmm. I figured these guys were going to be a little bit cut off from trying to support the infantry, since you know, none of that grain is a hindrance to him up on the hill. Right. Uh, but but he also does have. Have they do are protected by the orchards, uh, since he can't see past those. Right. Um. So, uh, so how but I, so I was thinking I was going to run, try to go through the woods. I, I forgot to, so my, my alt, my changed, changed plan. My plan B was to try to go through the woods and then get the tanks over here and let the infantry come through. I, uh, forgot that there's no trail breaks in uh starter kit. Right, so, right. uh, so that it was going to be bog roll for everyone, which was a little bit, you know, more of a drag, but, uh, um, that's fine. It, One, but would you would so you got these guys here, and so where did you end up stopping this guy right here? Uh, no, he went a little further, and he was his okay. plan was to go through through yeah. Uh, yeah, it gives through you a the bit woods better there. You can go here, or you could you yeah. know that way you could possibly either find way this guy right. So yep. and then these guys here that obviously um, your your minds your minds flow, flowing. What do you think? Do, is your plan going to change with these guys, or are you going to continue with your same plan? You you said you're going to move them up through here. Obviously, that might be an LOS, right? Orchard, so yeah. So, so I, how do, how do, how does your plan plan change? How does your plan so I, change with them? So I decided to bring the bring up. So at first I was thinking, you know, I was thinking that he would go through the woods and then they could follow through. So I I brought them oh, all right uh, this way. Um, and uh, actually, no, sorry, sorry. So this was the part where. I decided to to to, uh, to take my chances a little bit. So I was like, well, someone's going to have to deal with that gun, and uh, it's going to be a while before the infantry can get there, and uh, you know they're, they're going to get chewed up by the gun as well. So I'm going to send the King Tiger in and uh, see what see what he can do. So first, I sent I decided to deal with this side a little bit, which was a little easier. So I just sent those guys in. Um, but just put some smoke down just for the uh, the those two squads over there. Um, and then uh, was planning on you know eventually getting these guys in position to uh, to just basically stop him from having freedom of movement uh, to reposition oh, going his, back. Yeah, his yeah, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, since he's <clears throat> pretty heavily weighted on that side and he was going to want to move his guys over this way. So yeah. these guys were going to try to get, get in the way of that. Uh, you'll see that that plan also gets uh, messed up a bit, yeah. quite a bit. Uh, now so, when, when his gun um, shows up over here, he's got the other gun. So if this guy exactly. is going to be covering, all he has to do is change cover arc one time to the left, and he covers the entire way down this row here. So, in my right. opinion, his gun, the other gun, I will probably be down in here. Yep. That's yep. that's my opinion. Um, it's close. The infantry support's close to it, and it blows everything up that it hits. Yeah. Now, now, one uh, thing you, you notice will. about the gun. Tell me what you notice about that particular piece of equipment. 
just running around like a crazy fool. Some, what do you, what do you, what do you sorry, all right, sorry, I thought someone was That's talking. Right. No, no. Uh, just the, well, uh, uh, I mean, the covered arc, I was thinking, you know, I would try to have him uh, move him back and forth because um, he's, he's only got a rate of fire of one. So, um, you know, hopefully I can get him to have to change his covered arc and maybe intensive fire uh, right. and break what a, it. What about your what about your your attack on him? What can you tell me about that particular unit? If you were to attack this unit, like it's a hit. Let's say you're going to fire a 75 gun on him. Uh, it's a large target. Yep. And, and placed. Yeah. Uh, so it's easier to hit, right? Target. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's only plus one. So yeah, that's that's a big key. If that was a small target, it's gonna be harder to hit. Obviously, large target. Right. It's like okay, now he's only like an infantry plus one because the emplacement is gonna cancel some of that that easier right. to hit. So yeah, I mean you get the guys blasting over here. Um, so remember yeah. that. Um, so your plan on this guy is to kind of flank him and throw a smoke. Well, my basic plan, you know, and, uh, you know, I wasn't, I was, you know, trying to not bog down and think too much about it, just kind of come up on the fly with, you know, a, a basic idea and see, see how it went. Yeah. Uh, but my, my basic idea was to get, you know, get the infantry into this tree line on their first, first moves. And then, uh, you know, see, see what happened here. If he was going to keep this guy here, or if he was going to make him, you know, but skedaddle, right. uh, but, but then, you know, some, so I assumed he would keep him there because he's the kind of the only defense on that side. Uh, and so then, you know, work my way down through here, uh, hopefully with some, some support from at least one of the tanks, either getting through the woods, um, probably not coming out this way. Cause I, you know, didn't, right. uh, but, uh, but what I ended up doing was, you know, I moved those guys down sure. on that side and then I, uh, Move that guy, so that guy was going to go through the trees as well, oh, and nice. then uh, he made it. And then I was like, "All right, you know, King Tiger, big tough tank, he's going to come and take on the take on the gun." Oh. And uh, that did not go well. Oh. <laughs> um, so I think, um, yeah. So I think it. Yeah, King Tiger survived the defensive fire, but uh, did not survive the the prep fire. Um, so, no. Did you stop here? Did you did you do a stop movement point? I did. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So yeah, that you know, I uh, I think in retrospect that was uh, I, I didn't for some reason my back of the you know, quick cuff off the cuff math made it seem felt felt a little bit more confident in that. I was like, oh, he needs a turret hit, so that's less likely. And uh, <laughs> you know, he, he, I knew the two hit would be pretty good in prep fire because you know, large large right, target, right. Uh, extra large target, um, etc. So I knew he was pretty sure he was going to hit me, but he had to hit would have to hit me with a turret, and then his to kill would be you know, I think it was seven or less. So yeah. he did both of those things. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, you know, but so that, so I guess, you know, it's what, partly it's one of those things where like, all right, if, if the plan had worked, then I would have felt a little better about the plan. Um, but, you know, I guess that's kind of the basic question of, uh, you know, would you, do you hold back on the tanks a little bit and let the infantry catch up? And try to get the infantry into this tree line to try to deal with the, the gun, you know, or, um, you know, or what? Right now, he uh, does. He has armor coming on, right? Uh, he has a couple tanks coming on uh, over here uh, on the north edge. On the north uh, on edge. This, on the right, the right side. The right side. Um, okay, gotcha. So that was kind of. Uh, you know, I was hoping to get these guys down with some Panzerfausts to to dissuade him a little bit yeah. from a couple spots and then the, then these two the king tiger over here and the right. other panzer four was but um so they can they come on course. turn three right so it says they come on turn three on the north edge of yep. v and z which would be uh it's like the bottom two bottom, bottom two, two boards, boards on gotcha. the right gotcha yeah so, where, the, yeah, um, where the hex grid is there so uh would you move the king and tiger I, here um i i mean 
people might say, ah, you, you, you might want to bait him for something else. But uh, the only thing is, is um, I think you're right. You should have you should have waited it a little bit. I mean, you could have parked him. Let's say you could have just parked him right here. I think this is an LOS there. What do you guys think? By knowing your LOSs without drawing an LOS, what do you think about Q8? Do you think this unit has an LOS to Q8? Where's going to be? Think, where, yeah. Where's going to be the uh, midpoint to that yeah. to that attack? Let's see if you parked in Q8. You know, essentially to fire on this unit over here for the hell of it. And you're just waiting. Two, three. three. So where's the midpoint going to be on that line of sight, gentlemen? You could red line like it. Right. In... Right in the middle of O1 and uh... O10. I see. I see it right here. If if you were to park him here, I see the line of sight right there, right in the middle. Be right there. Oh, oh, there. Yeah, there. Okay. So, yeah, it's like a so, Q7. And that yeah, looks like a clear LS to me. So you'd probably have to back him up a little bit, right? So this would have been yeah. a really sweet spot because then you don't have to deal with the the wheat field when you're firing on this unit. And um, even even yeah, you, you're not going to shoot that guy over there. But if you fire on this unit, just so like you said, like when you move aggress onto this unit. You could do two things because um, you've got a lot of guys up here. Um, uh, I, I would have had these guys, to be honest with you, move them here. Because now um, you could actually just make one giant fire group on this guy. You're going to be mm -hmm. he's going to be a plus four, but you, but that's where your volume of fire comes into play. This guy can't even advance fire on him. So even a little shit shot from this guy is only going to be actually that might be clear. That might be a clear shot from that guy. Yeah, that's a clear shot from him. Yeah. So yeah, and then um, and that way, I mean, you might have not have seen that, but but that way, um, well, they weren't there until the advanced phase, oh, the advanced and then he, phase. Just right. yeah, yeah. he just he just he just sculpted he just sculpted them back to there. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's the, fine. So, and so um, yeah. yeah, you could definitely at this point when if he did he skulk back back to that same location L ten. Uh, I believe he he skulks there and then to there. Okay. Not he, a problem, he goes man. back to there, and then that's when that's the next the next showdown is. That's the next part where that went terribly wrong was my assault on those woods. Okay. Uh, was okay. Pretty, uh, so 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 let's say your infantry. You, you wanted to move your infantry versus your tanks, or you could do tanks versus infantry. But again, he's got like those hidden units, right? And um, those potential hidden units. So infantry up here, not a problem because you know most likely he's just going to break you with this gun instead of blow you up. So most likely you're just going to break infantry and you've got lots of firepower to deal with that. And, and technically there's only one squad there. Could you have more? Sure. But that's what, just when you start you know, throwing one squad at a time up there and, and you, Oh yeah. No, the, uh, the other squads, if he, if he puts other guys on board, uh, up there, they're not hidden. It's only, only would only be the gun that would be hidden. Oh, so, okay. so, I, so he, he's allowed down. to, yeah. Like this guy is technically set up on that on that board since he's on the half yeah. hex. Okay. Um, and then these guys were set up on that board. So okay. yeah, the, he was just allowed to put three MMCs on, uh, on board X, uh, but not, not hidden, you know, only the gun would be hidden. Oh, I got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so that's the only guy you have to worry about over there. So yeah, that's right. fine. And, and again, like you said, if, um, um, uh, I would balk at this particular movement only simply because, you can't take advantage of it. Let's say, let's say, right. let's say you moved yep. him into Q7, and then next turn you move him up, and he takes that shot. Yep. And then these yep. guys, if they were past exactly. the trees, they could then because yep. he he. I think an artillery piece. Uh, I might I have to look this up. I'm pretty sure he can't once he's prep fired. He can't change his covered arc and fire again because he's not a, a circular thing. They're pretty much restricted to continue to fire through, the, through their covered arc. So you could bring a tank right up next to him, and he he can't do a damn thing about it. And right. then you just I think completely he, Yeah, him. I think he can change once because he's got uh, one rate of fire. Um, oh well, if he but, had rate uh, of fire, but right, yeah, but if he prep fire, yeah. once he's prepped, right. he can't he can't intensify fire by if he has to change his covered arc for the artillery piece. Right, because yeah, uh, it's just not that mobile. That, gotcha. So. Yeah, but um, um, then then yeah, you could do that, or or you could wait like another turn for your infantry up there, or again your line of sight. You if you right, uh, obviously you probably don't want to put your infantry here, but if you had if you had your uh, infantry like at a long angle over here, 
I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you're in the trees or the wheat field. The only thing you need is the range because the wheat field won't apply, right? Because he's going to be at an elevated location. Right. So the only thing you're right. looking at is the plus two. So that yeah. even even the even the chintzy oops, even the chintzy uh, machine gun that you have here, the medium machine gun. Um, I mean, you you've got that and some units. That's probably not twelve hexes. That looks probably like maybe like ten hexes. Let's just say you were here. Yeah, it's eleven hexes. And uh, I, I, although I don't know if you could make it over there, you know what I'm saying. Let's say you were at, right. at uh, you were at here, and then you advanced to here, and uh, that might be a close LOS. But but that way you're far enough away from this guy, you know. Uh, and then you start opening open ground, and um, and uh, and so again, I get you're out of his covered arc. So if he if he points this way, your tanks probably go the other way. And um, yeah. So, yep. Yeah, I think that's really that's that's the key. That was my kind of key takeaway from this. That yeah, you know, I felt like that was the bi the the big mistake was not like you said, not being able to capitalize. You know, okay, so you you you're you know you're gonna lose you're gonna likely gonna lose one tank to that gun, right. but uh, but then you got to be able to take advantage of the fact that it's it's fired, and now you you know you got to try to take it out on yeah on that next yeah that next turn with and, with um, either you know get an infantry so yeah i think just more patience uh on that right. um yeah you know i was i was i think i was too a little too concerned with trying to cut cut off cut off this reinforcement you know route i got you um, i got you and, and then it, and then basically the same thing ends up happening over here his gun pops up over here oh my goodness uh and now i've got uh you know the these two tanks plus the ones that come on so trying to figure out how to deal deal with it here right. um now and, uh, now let's let's say uh like again this is this is the, what you want to do um this gun is an 88 this is a 75 right so on let's say mm -hmm. you hit him on the infantry fire table it's only one column mm -hmm. difference right right which tank is easier to hit the big boy right sure so yeah. if you wanted to yeah. risk a tank I would have no problem in you throwing a little Panzer IV up there, although he has smoke. I, you know, that's another thing to consider is is your is your loss of smoke. You might you might want to consider putting him there. I mean, it's easy, it's it's just a regular tank at that point, and um, you know, if you're if you're CE and you put him there, there's a good chance. I mean, there's an okay chance that he misses him, but with the minus two, I mean, if this guy's moving, essentially he's he's firing at a non-moving vehicle, you know, just because of the size modifier alone makes him right pretty much he's not going to get missed that's why he's, he's got to rely on his armor but that's you know you took a chance and uh it could have paid off in big time spades he could have lost a gun first but he happened to like you say he happened to hit you and then um and then uh and then it just kind of went south on you from that point but that's fine that i mean that's it's a risk that you're willing to take and uh, as long as you knew the consequences you know um now the focus is on these guys now what's he probably going to do with this gun you know, if he knows you're going through here, you know, he might, uh, he might, you know, swivel the gun that other direction and then cause more problems. But luckily, guess what? If he does swivel the gun, then your infantry can, or your, your tank and infantry can go this way. And then, right. and then he's not going to hit you because then he's got to turn it back, which is plus three and you're moving. Yep. And then if he, if he swivels that way, then your other tank goes away the other side. So, right. um, so that's a good thing. Okay. Go, go ahead and continue. But yeah, that's the, that's a, that's a. That's a good point, right? There. Yeah, I mean that's mostly what I, you know, I don't want to take up, I don't want to take up too much time. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's mostly just the, you know, just wanted to get your thoughts on on uh, on dealing, you know, with that. The the main thing that that happens later is just that you know these these guys move in here and then this gun pops up here. So I I tried to there was you know his his popped up here with uh with the uh, the covered arc uh, facing this way because he was thinking I was going to come up uh, oh, along right. the hill. Okay. Uh, so so it was down. This hex spine was you know his his covered arc. Um, so I kind of was able to maneuver into you know into this area without he would either have to swivel to take the shot um, or I was getting covered from the orchards. Right. Uh, so so we we uh, we haven't we haven't finished. Uh, finished yet but the the next thing that'll happen will be the showdown between i've got i've got three tanks here wow. and he's got his, <laughs> his gun here so you know again he's like that that over there it you know he's likely to take out one of them but hopefully i'll get him uh with the other ones but okay. uh okay my next question to you 
do your victory conditions rely on you taking out those guns? No, no. I mean, no. They, uh, but uh, if what I'm most worried about is, uh, you know, is is the is his tanks coming? You know, if he if he has freedom to get his tanks into the into here, uh, then that's going to make things a lot a lot tougher. So I want to be able to get my tanks, uh, you know, down into that area before. Uh, his reinforcements come on. Which area is that? I'm sorry, um, I didn't see it. Uh, down into the city, basically, okay. you know, okay. in, into the, where the victory buildings are, because uh, he's got, you know, uh, two uh, uh, two IS2s and two T3485s coming on, uh, and you know, those are uh, those right. are pretty good, pretty good match for anything, ex- you know, the King Tiger, except the King, the the one remaining King Tiger. Right. Um, How long so, is this scenario? Uh, How long is it? It's long. It's eight and a half turns. Okay. So, okay. Um, uh, so you you were looking to move your tanks into the town before he came on. Well, originally I was thinking I was gonna go. Um, I was gonna get one of them down. Try to get one of them somewhere, uh, you know, down on this edge to uh, cut off some of his you know entry options. Right. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, I wanted to, cause they come out on turn three. So, you know, was, was planning on having him at least be, you know, down here, um, just kind of in position so that he'd be, he'd be moving up on, on me, um, instead of vice versa. Right. Um, that was the, the basic plan. Right. Um, so, um, so like, um, remember the, the easiest way, what's the easiest way to take out a tank that you can't destroy his frontal armor? You can't get through his frontal armor. Let's let's assume he doesn't have the. Let's say let's just just assume they're all T thirty four eighty fives and he doesn't have the JSU one twenty twos. But let's just you mean just in jet like well I mean obviously side shots right. So so if, so if you had if your plan was for the one tank, let's say your tiger was going to be like or sitting right up here with a, with whatever covered arc you were at or up on the hill or something like that. Um, since he since he comes on this edge. And his vehicles have 16 movement factors. He could, if you only had the one vehicle up there, I don't know if you plan on having two of them up there or whatever, but um, make sure you have covering fire because all four of those tanks can take out your King Tiger pretty easily. Right. Pretty easily. You you might get two, um, but most likely he will get you on the backside on that one there. It's tricky. And, um, right. And, and considering yeah. if you're over here, this gun could then swivel and get an ass shot on you. I mean, right. And so and it's dangerous. I, yeah. It's just dangerous. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think, you know, my, my gut feel on this one is that I'm, I'm planning to, to eventually lose the tank battle. Uh, but that the goal is that the tanks tie each other up long enough that, you know, that I tie his tanks up long enough that my infantry gets, you know, gets into, into this, you know, middle of the city area, um, right. you know, before, before getting, you know, cut off for, by his tanks right um so uh so let's let's, you know, as, let's I, assume let's assume your king tiger survived and then you or or this king tiger makes his way to this hill over here does he does he command the battlefield from that point uh how, well how well, let me ask you this let's assume he's an l4 and uh or in a position where the, the main gun over here is very difficult to hit him or it's pointing other way or, or he's occupied. Oh, he's otherwise occupied. Right. Um, if you, if you or knocked out at that point, I mean, you've got enough guns. If you're over here, where, where is he likely going to bring on his armor? So, I mean, I, he's can just bring him on into the city and right. just through right. the city, through the roads. Right. And so as long as his armor's in the roads, then, then you can sort of. I don't know what he's going to do with his units here. Uh, again, it, it'll stop him from going backwards, and it might provide you know some supplementary fight because you get double L on those guns. And yeah. So, so that that'll give you a benefit at range. Um, uh, where I mean, he's got L two as well. But uh, again, with the numbers, since you lost that one guy early, uh, you might want to dominate one side because you you were thinking about coming this way anyway. And, right. Um, I, I, if you move your armor into the town before your infantry can get behind you on that, that's really risky. Oh, a, your vehicles are much slower than his, and uh, obviously you can cover some roadways. 
but uh but again this this might be one of those points where he might bring let's say he might bring this tank here right that and that, let's say you uh i'm just gonna clone this guy here let's say you, your your tiger's sort of like in this city or it's it's like right here and it's uh it's it's got its covered arc something like that or you know something like this where it's gonna kind of shoot down the roadway he could he could legit although it's his frontal armor is pretty nasty he could legit move his 122s let me just use the 122 instead because he could actually kill you he could legit drive his 122 directly into that building or directly into this building for that matter this would be a better spot but uh but if you want to bog you might want to bog here because it'll cover the road and um mm -hmm. that'll be a plus five to hit most likely you're gonna miss him and most likely he's gonna miss you but you're you're, you're shot after that it's still, like I said, it's still, if you're going to be, be buttoned up, it's going to be, uh, this will be a six to hit him, I think, at that point. It'll be three, four, you have one acquisition, be three, maybe a seven to hit him. And um, and that's just in a stone building, point blank. But he's not going to miss you. I mean, he's right. just not going to miss you. So it's a, it's, a, it's a seven to a 12 or an 11. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, so the, he'll get for, you'll get first shot, but you know, uh, but if he gets his infantry near you, cause you're going to take that shot. And, um, and, uh, like I say, you don't want your infantry swarmed, your tanks swarmed, uh, or right. unoccupied. And you have a lot of infantry. So I think you have, yeah. I think you have room to, to press it, especially since you lost that tank early. Uh, I have no problem in you putting the pressure on him and, and trying to cut his units off. But when you have early losses, uh, I mean, you can still get there. I mean, you've got four, at least four tanks here, and you've got a, to a boatload of infantry. And um, so I don't see really any resistance on this side, even with this medium. You could you could run behind this wheat field like like it doesn't ex like he doesn't exist. He's not going to be able to get enough firepower and do anything over here at all. Right. So um, he'd be he'd be better served if he moved up into M7. That would be a danger shot because his medium can fire the whole way down here. He probably has LOS to C5, and he covers the entire hill. And he covers the seal over here as well. Um, but he's covering the road. I mean, technically he's covering the road in case you're like, going to do something fancy. But uh, the wheat field's the wheat field's the enemy. He needs to get up and above the wheat field. And again, that's something you could do. Is uh, you know, Although he's got a 122 here, his 122 is never going to hit you. Well, it's harder for him to hit you here, but if you put your medium... Uh, if you put your medium like two squads, uh, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that'd be an eight shot. Uh, 10, 11, 12. If you put two squads, uh, a light and a medium on first level here, that's going to be it's, a uh, starter kit, right? So, no, oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even if you yeah. put it, let's say, in um, the uh, in the building, the plus two of the building, he's going to need a, a five to hit you at that point. And then you're going to have a um, yeah, and then and then you got a twelve right back out of twelve plus one here. He's gonna be he's he's gonna lose that battle. Plus you're gonna be moving the other, other infantry up over here, so he's gonna be he's gonna be pressured to do something. And um, right again, if he breaks you, you know, one twenty is nothing to spit. That's twenty four. If he hits you, he's yeah. gonna, he's gonna be he's gonna be pounding your face. So eight morale, yep. eight morale units. You know, yep. you want somebody <laughs> yep. alive so this little bastard doesn't do fancy stuff. But uh, yeah, and then yeah. all your other guys, I mean, you could pressure him and take him out. But uh, yeah, it's tricky, like you say. But um, smoke, remember yeah. smoke. You smoke like just shoot. You know where his guns are. You don't have to shoot smoke on him. Just shoot smoke where he wants right. to fire through. Right. You know, and yep. uh, and then you you should be fine from there. As long you know, if you're gonna move over here and avoid him, and if he's already pointing that direction, shoot a smoke around here and a smoke around there, and get behind that woods, and then next turn hopefully you won't roll you know higher numbers on those and yeah then, um, well yeah they, they we played like i said we got through another turn or two and yeah they, both of these tanks bogged in the woods so oh that was my fun. god um, yeah so. it just slows you up a little bit <laughs> yeah. so uh so yeah, yeah. You, you could do something like that but smoke is your friend especially and your and your navitidix gungswaffa too as well uh your sm yeah. is a nine yep. that's that's a free smoke that's a free dispersed smoke you know yeah uh, yeah, that's yeah. Water, I mean, that right? was the plan was for these guys to come and use the uh, the Nafteidigens Waffe or the um, their main armament smoke to yeah. you know, smoke and, and these that, guys out. Because you're not going to win this game with tanks, right? You're going to win this game with infantry. Right. Yep. The more yep. infantry you get into that town, all your tanks can die. Because guess what? When his infantry come, when his tanks come into town, your infantry can take care of them pretty pretty soundly. Yeah. He he can't be dicking yeah. around. He can't be dicking around with your infantry. So. 
as long as you maximize these these 12 guys over here if you get two-thirds of that force into that town um the game is yours that the, the tricky part is is this uh <laughs> this kind of open queue roadway right right so uh yep. so a good a good jumping off point might be these woods but he, he probably knows that and that's why he's got most of his force there but, yeah uh, yeah i think it'll i think i, I really looking forward to finishing this one and then playing it again with full full rules because i think it'll be really interesting to see the difference you know armored assault or riders and fire lanes right. you know just, yeah. and just how some things change some things don't i think it'll be really interesting to see yeah that, uh, that, that's that fine that's out. cool yeah the king tigers they, yeah they don't seem to last that long i'm not sure why but <laughs> they get a lot well, of attention you feel you feel like they're invulnerable and they're yeah you know, just, until they're not eight armor <laughs> yeah eight extra armor. large target yeah you so. know i mean look at the look at the side armor with those uh 122s it's 11 i mean it's at least better yeah you yep. know but um but yeah it's kind of funny yeah. Well, yeah, it's a tough, tough uh, spot. Well, I, a tough spot. Yeah, well, I appreciate the feedback. I gotta go uh, make some dinner, but um, yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. yeah, thanks, thanks for chatting about that one. Sure, and, uh, sure. And if anybody's got any yeah. questions, if they want to add something to this about what they what they think they might they they might want to do, um, that's why we're here. Let's go with some other ideas. If anybody's got other things that that Scott might be able to look up on the uh, video later on or something like that, and um, or uh, you know, just different things like that. If you guys have any ideas or any questions about, you know, motion fire or, you know, guys that can fire, guys that can't fire, or if you're unsure about, like I said, the, the, the SN number, if that doesn't look familiar to you, you know, we could rehash on that. Um, so whatever, whatever questions you guys have, regardless of, uh, of their content was, is, is game is totally game. So kind of a stupid side question but uh scott who did your map that thing is beautiful oh uh um yeah uh tony did that one he did a great job with the vassal templates oh the templates yeah, yeah no kidding yeah the templates with the vehicles pretty much almost you have to have that because especially with germans there's so much good stuff on it yeah yeah he and i were chatting about it i went through a big phase of, of using vassal templates and now I'm kind of over it. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> a lot yeah. of work, yeah, but it, well, it's just. I am right now, so. Yeah, although I do like the vehicle. The vehicles I still stick in there just yeah. uh, for that. But I've also, you know, I've found I I feel like uh, I'm not convinced that it has anything to do with vassal templates or not. But uh, you know, there's some weird glitches with line of sight. I don't know if you guys have experienced that, where you you know your line of sight gets. Uh, kind of f slow or frozen. Um, mm. I've had a couple of times where uh, I've had it, it hasn't happened to me that much, but with player people I've been playing with, and uh, just on a very unscientific gut feel, it seems to happen more on uh, on the uh, maps with the extra you know stuff on them. Um, right. So I I don't know if that actually has anything to do with it or not, but um, well, you worth, never know. Uh, I I know. Yeah. I, I remember loading up. Um a game with the templates on it right and uh i think i think I, what i what i had was the, i had the templates loaded in the scenario and saved it right and if you're playing a game with the templates you have to i'm pretty sure you have to have the vessel template program running in the back um because uh, it i think it depends on how you uh how you have it configured right but what uh, um, but the experience that i had was um Although I just have it, I have it running now because it gets the images from 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 the from the net. Is uh, right. when, when I didn't have it running in the back, my opponent couldn't even load up the game. Nothing would load up, and so hmm. after I removed all the Vassal template windows, then he loaded right up. So right. there's some sort yeah. of thing going on with that. I don't know exactly. I didn't pursue it, but um, yeah. But just, just, just one more variable, that, you know. Yeah, there's a couple couple weird things going with it, but the information it provides as long as you guys work around that. Um, can be very helpful, especially if you're not familiar with all the modifiers and, or you don't like looking on the back of guys. I mean, the, the German yeah. vehicles, just that really, just that little, like, like Scott says, just a little summary there is just keeps reminding you that you have smoke, smoked chargers, you know, SN, this, that, and the other, because, yep. um, uh, it's easy to forget, especially like, you know, especially if you lose a King Tiger like this, it's like, oh man, you know, you, you, you start you forgetting little things because you, you might start to panic a little bit and then uh things go south real quick yeah so all right i gotta run but thanks again guys i'll sure. see you next time sure take care scott
Yeah, have good night. evening, Scott. Good night, Scott. So, um, any other questions on this particular one, guys? Any any observations to make? You know, whether it doesn't really have to be with armor. What you know, maybe observations on the setup on on how how maybe you would attack this or any 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 comments whatsoever on this game. Any comments whatsoever that you guys have? You know? Well, I actually watched some more of this, and it was it was pretty interesting to watch. Uh, I think Scott played it pretty aggressively. Um, moving forward I'll was say that did, did did you like his aggression did you i mean did you like how he's some I, of it because I, I, yeah. I don't know how i don't know how he pursued from here was it did it did you see like oh wow he really you know he really pushed hard over there and it really paid off or or what i mean just in terms of what your perception was well, yeah it they stopped shortly after this so there's a lot left to play but yeah i think he really especially that squad in the J10, K10, that 447. He really went after that guy. And I don't think that was resolved when they stopped the game. So I guess it's yet to be seen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this but guy. He threw, this, he threw yeah. a lot at it. And I was I was kind of watching that going, yeah, he's just he's just going right after him. Yeah, this guy's pretty much dead meat. Now, what would you guys do with this guy? If you're the Russian and you see this over here, what would you do with this unit? You know, obviously you, you you're using him to kind of guard this guy for a bit. What would you? How would you? Would you defend this, or would you just say, "Hey, it's going to fire until it blows up"? I mean, how would you guys approach this? Because you got other units in proximity, right? Because he has nothing on the right hand side. You've got one, two, three squads over here with the leader, um, and you've got these guys over here. He only has two two infantry squads over here. You don't care about his tanks. These infantry don't care about these tanks. You know, the, your tanks are coming on. They're probably going to have to deal with those guys. Uh, hell, you could just drive over the... Well, I don't know if you can drive, but... I mean, but you've got you've got some infantry capabilities over here. How would you... How would you address this situation if you were the Russians and this is your prep fire phase? And that's the, let's say that that's the only prep fire unit you had. Um... Would you move? Would you prep fire? Because he said he like skulked to K one and then like moves back or J ten or something like that. How? W what would you guys look at from there? Would you try to shoot at him when he's coming across here, or would you wait until he gets closer? Would you move other units over there? Would you move him away? Would you CX his ass away to save him, um, or what? Again, there's no right answer here. It's just on how you guys, uh, when you see this, how do you guys react to it? Anybody? Mark, Steve, John, how, Philip. How would you guys? How would you guys react to the essentially nine squads and two tanks up in your face? If you stay, will you survive in this area? Yeah. Well, I think if he doesn't move out this turn, he's not going to. He's going to be there. Yeah. Right until it's over. But I thought maybe the squad in T one maybe could move a little bit to the left side of the board to like uh, R1, maybe provide a little bit more fire on that open ground and to the edge of that wheat field they have to cross to get to them. To R1, uh, PQ, oh, like right the here? Four, four, seven. Yeah, 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 or, or just leave them in the woods right there. Where else could he go, gentlemen? Let's say, uh, where else could this unit go? Where's it? Where's actually a pretty safe spot for this unit? Not necessarily a safe spot, but not a bad spot for that unit. If you're going to use him to delay these guys, and pretty much that's what these guys are for, right? They're to delay the Germans from getting to the town, and pretty much it's just going to have to cost them their lives. If these guys were going to go back there, the R1, R1, right there. Okay. It gives him a good field of fire over to the over to the left. What what sh what shot will that be? What shot will this be from right here? If the if the Germans if it's going to be probably a two two up one. Yeah. So, so it's it's it's. Do do you want do you now when he, he, the return fire? Let's say the two up one shot. I mean, it's not a horrible shot. 
but let's say let's say he moves him right here or let's say you know whatever he's got things that he's got things to worry about but let's say you move one squad up do you fire on one squad and then the other squad kind of moves up or the other or they spread out you know you might want to start spreading out or something like that so this guy doesn't take the whole stack down you know it'd be a four even shot if they straight up moved um uh, but let's say you uh because you've got other guys over here that can move up and now how, how many units are, are are pretty much drawing fire on both sides he can get a lot of return firepower right and that's not even counting the tanks let's ignore the tanks just the infantry for the for that same matter he could bring some serious firepower to the to to that location and you're in plus one so and again uh if you break are you going to rally who's going to rally you if this uh, unit breaks who's going to rally him yourself nobody nobody you're gonna have to self-rally so remember remember the other scenario where we broke we broke right in front of the guy right the on the americans on the left hand side we broke and we routed the direction the americans were going did that save the unit did that do anything for that unit's survivability the Not only really. thing that will happen here if he breaks this distance he'll he might have he might have one turn to rally before the germans can possibly get there let's say the germans say okay i need to go pursue that guy or i i can ignore him he's out of the combat for this matter so you can move him here to, to kind of cover like an open ground assault here uh, another position that he can move since his tank is gone and all those guys are all these guys are in here right you might think about one two three four and advance here this is extremely risky and you break you're gonna die but that gets that gets a little bit better shot over here so even if this guy does break you still have that area covered this is this is a two even shot on this guy can he move guys over there yeah he's got plenty of guys to move over there what happens when he starts to move guys over there He's got a 122. It's going to blow the shit out of this if he moves in a stack. He's going to blow that guy up. I don't know if I'd be staring. I'd be at that point again. That's where the order of movement would come into play. You might want to throw some infantry out there. You know, he might go one, two, three, and you might actually want to move your leader with him just for the hell of it. Just a squad there to see if he fires. You know, uh, that might be a possibility. If he fires this big gun. And then he doesn't get ready to fire. Then your tanks go hog wild. Then your tanks destroy the gun. Then the gun is gone. So he's either saving the gun to blow up a stack of infantry, or he's saving the gun to blow up a tank. Now, which would you choose? If given the target, let's say let's say a four, five, eight, and let's say he 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 moves just two guys over and right here. Let's say this is the target, and he's got two tanks. Remember, these are Panzer fours. These aren't King Tigers. His King Tiger's gone. He's got a Panzer IV and a Panzer IV here. Right? And your other tank, your other gun is over here. Unfortunately, it's going up facing the opposite direction, so I'm not taking that one into consideration. So remember, you're a 122. That's 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 24 chart. So what would you need to critical hit this guy if he's moving in the open like that? So let's look at the to hit number. And I guess again, this is this is risk versus reward. What what your priority is. So we've got uh it's a seven to twelve range against infantry. Your base is six to hit. Okay. So do we get movement modifiers on the infantry for a gun? What modifiers do we get? The base six to hit. Okay. Well, you get the non-assault movement and the moving in the open. Right. So what do we need to hit him? An eight. An eight. Eight's pretty easy to hit. What's the critical hit on that shot? Now, remember, it's based on the your base to hit number. I think it's a three. A three. A three or two. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. But if you roll an eight, you're still going to hit him. And so that'll be a 24 chart. The average roll on the 24 chart will be a three morale check. Those guys are probably going to ELR. They're going to they're going to be hating life. That's going to be one hell, especially if he moves a leader. 
because what's his victory conditions? I mean, you could you could He's straight up get down into the city and root out all these uh, Russians out of the buildings. Right. A four is a straight up K, one KIA. So he loses one of those guys. He has to root these guys out, and is he going to root those out with tanks? It's going to be hard. He can't do the two with tanks alone. So the more infantry you can kill, the better. If these guys break, let's just say they all break. And let's just say for whatever reason, uh, these guys break, and then they essentially end up rotting back here. And the, the rest of the guys ignore this guy over here. What can then he do? Let's say these guys, you know, approach over here. Two, three, advance. You know, this guy. This guy moves up over here. You know, something like that. This stack over here. <clears throat> and then he says, and he says the tanks can kind of get bogged. So let's just assume the tanks are bogged. I'm not going to take the tanks into consideration. Do you have to? Yeah, because the tanks are part of the game. But let's say he's putting pressure on here like he wants to, and as he should, to blow this little shit away. And let's say he moved, just to say, like say, he moved two guys, no approach over there. Then, um, and that's this member. And so if he doesn't go too far back, what can the Russian player then do with this unit? How, how does this, how can you use this particular Russian unit to better yourself? Now, now take, take into consideration, you're in this situation here. Can you retreat and just go backwards? Yeah, you can just pull these guys back. <coughs> he can get up on the hill real easy. Same modifier as the thing right here. Um, that might be something he might want to do. But let's say, for instance, if you, if you kind of like just turn the tide for a second. I might consider something like this. If he's here, if you moved him over here and he's moving like this, I actually might want to just leave him in K1. Um, because if he moves anybody adjacent... You're going to get a, an eight firepower and let's say he moves a guy over here four even and four even you're taking for this is final protective fire territory here people you're, you're going to fire until you break because you're breaking if you don't if you, these guys will break you otherwise so this is final protective fire in this sort of situation that that's that's just because you want to fire as much as possible especially if he if, especially if he throws his seven morale units in there that's a four even shot you need a uh, seven for a pin task check. So a six is a morale check. Six keeps you alive, and he takes a morale check. Um, is it because because if you're here, if he advances fire, um, how many shots are you getting? You're getting one, maybe two shots. If you go here, you're getting an eight firepower. He's not going to give you an eight minus two here. It's not going to happen. He's not going to give you an eight minus two. He's gonna he's gonna move up here, uh, maybe move around. Maybe take, you know, maybe take, you know, because he's got to go for the woods anyway. He's really not going through the wheat fields. Um, so you might want to keep it range or just go back here because he's not going to, he's not going to make it here. Especially if this unit moves up here. Even if he, even if he charges, goes across there. Well, that's a two minus two. You won't get a second shot, but you'll get a two minus two. You know, that's, a, that's the same, essentially the same sort of firepower he gets. And if anybody makes it in here. You know, if anybody goes here, that's a subsequent first fire shot. So you could follow up at least two, two even on him. That way, he could possibly break this guy, break his right side, and he could focus on these two hexes. But I don't know if he'll get there. Because if he goes here, then that's going to be a subsequent first fire of two minus two. So essentially, by moving him here, you you curtail the German's move, which may or may not make a difference. I mean, he could just go like this on, on these two sides and approach it from that angle. But you're getting one minus two shot. But he's only jumping into these two hexes. He goes over here. You, that, that's a four minus two. And you're moving your gun there as well. And then he's just going to blow up. That That's a seven to hit right there. Even after moving your gun. And then and then he's got to make a decision. Then you, then you blow him up here. At that point, at that point, you probably don't. If he does something like this, you don't find a protective fire. Why? If he final protective fires and breaks, what does that give the German? All kinds of interdiction if he has to route. Yeah, it, give, it, it gives the German freedom of fire. Do the Germans have to fire on this guy now? No. 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 They, who, they, they fire on this guy. If he's alive, if you, if you don't break him, because if he pulls some sort of stunt like this where you just swivel your gun... And use the minus two. That's in line. Uh, is that in LOS? I don't know. 
Uh, that's that's an LOS. That's easy, easy money there. Wow. So if you so right there, even if he, even if he pulls that stunt, so pretty much he's got two hexes to approach just simply because you're moving here because he can't move here, and if he moves the stack there, you swivel the gun. That's plus three, but this is minus two. Well, actually, it'll be minus one because of moving the overone apply. But that's a two to hit, so that'll be a six. And a six at 122 is bad news for these guys. You're blowing shit up with 122. And um, so for these guys, these guys honestly can't afford to move in here without smoke being shrouding them. They just can't because then the gun, if he gets another shot, he's blowing this guy away. And all of those guys are blowing up. And where are they routing to? Because they have to route. You're not staying there. You are not staying here because, first of all, he'll have a minus one acquisition on you. Even if he goes area target type, that's still a 12 chart. So if you blow up here, guess where you're going? What direction are you going? Away from your objective. Away. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, John. You're going a full movement phase away from your objective. So if you're assaulting this area right here, you want smoke. Because if he's sitting behind there... Do you give a shit? Nope, because you could jump in the smoke and you could, honestly, with this much firepower, you could just fire out of the smoke. <coughs> Only one of these guys has to break him. And this thing will then need... Uh, that's a plus four. He'll need a four to hit you there instead of a six or an eight. And then, since he's coming this direction, you know, uh, once you break this guy, you start moving one at a time. And if he wants to fire... Uh, then your tanks enter the equation and then just destroy them. Again, I, this isn't even adding the tanks into it, so it's hard anyway to begin with, but you need smoke in this situation. You don't want to put these guys in front of this singular gun and get blown to... Because you got to stack up to start... You know, you, At this point, you probably don't want to stack. You want to spread them out. But again, if you move to L9, that's 4 minus 2. So it, get, it gets real tight here real quick. It looks like it's open, but it gets tight real quick. Um, you know, one thing you might want to do with the Germans is um, uh, smoke here, right? You want to smoke because there's no moving for the Germans. If you're moving over here and you want to outflank him, you want to smoke and you want to smoke. And that way, if you want to outflank him, you run behind this hill. And then at the end of the turn, you advance on top of the hill with your medium machine gun, your light machine gun. Probably at an 8 hex range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Probably get up to here. Probably get get to this position in the second moon phase, then advance up to here. And then now you're at 8 hex range. And again, what's he got to do? Change his covered arc. He's not going to hit you on the first shot, most likely. Plus, you're going to have other infantry up in his face. Get, get angles on this son of a bitch. Because he's centralized, he can't cover all angles. He's not a 360 gun. He can't swivel on a top. This guy pretty much fires in the direction that he's going for. That's about the only thing he's going to hit. And he did hit one of our good tanks. Now, kind of going back to this guy. Because we know these Germans have to advance, right? He can't dick around over here. He can't dick around screwing this with one squad. Let's say, let's say he gets over here, right? And let's say he, this guy gets crushed and he's gone. And we've advanced our units up here. What does this unit do? And the tanks are kind of like jostling for position they don't really want to show themselves what does this unit do you know if if this is the situation where he's advancing pretty good you know obviously there's a situation here we might want to think about trying to get this guy you know up and around keep these guys dm you know that's going to be a two plus two does that dm him in the advanced fire phase Does a 2 plus 2 DM that unit in the advanced fire phase? Sure, it would. Yeah, it would still DM him, so yeah, he'd, he'd have to route back further, right? And let's just say mm -hmm. you just continue to pursue. Then you advance here. He doesn't make... Hopefully, he won't make his rally, because if he rallies, you're going to be in big, big trouble. But then you just con continue to pursue him, right? And all the while, right? This could take a couple turns. All the while, these Germans are making their way down here, right? Right, and so... 
let's say this guy annoys this guy to a point where he goes two, four, six, and he says, okay, I'm done with you. And these tanks are coming this direction. What do you think I'm getting out here with this unit, gentlemen? You're setting up some interesting routing problems for the Germans if he has to back up anybody. Right. This guy can follow these guys down because when these guys rally, let's say he says, okay, screw them, I'm done. And then these Germans continue to move, right? And these guys, let's say these guys rally right now. Boom. Uh, break. All right. Remember, you're in the same position as you were right on turn two. Right, you've got one squad, but instead of defending against nine, you're only defending against two. Is he, first of all, is he going to move in a stack? If, if if you end up here, and then he rallies and he's going to move, is he going to move in a stack? Is he going to go, you know, three, six? No, because if he breaks, you, you first of all you got to fire on him. If he breaks, you <laughs> you're you're probably just, hopefully you're just going to rob back one hex. But you go back to where you started from. This is turn four or five. He's out of the game at that point. You've essentially killed this unit. He's out of the game at that point. And then this unit can CX, because you don't care if he CX. One, two, three, four, five, six, advance. Now, any Germans over here that have LOS to this unit, this unit really wants to get, like, it, just in a nasty spot, you know? He could follow up in a nasty spot. For when these guys break, they can't go back in this general drag. It gets kind of tight. Once you get in a city, it gets kind of tight. But you kind of see the general idea. But just look for this opportunity. It's like, oh, it's a long game. You know, since it's such a long game, the Germans have time to maneuver. If this is a six-turn game, the Germans are going one direction that's straight at the town. And he's not stopping. He's not prep firing. He's not doing anything. Six-turn game, the German can't fire at anything. He moves, he fires, he moves, he fires. But moving this one unit, you know, here and this unit back here, you know, depending on what he does with his tanks. Again, it's it's not a good spot for the Russians. But the tanks don't win the battle for the Russians or the Germans. The infantry does. If this if this stack was broken over here, that's two guys, right? And now you're using one guy to take two guys out of the fight. You know, it might take a while to get there. You might be looking at some really nasty shots. You know, you might have to take a risk here. That might be a that might be a a six even shot from, from his units that might occupy K ten. But again, if he occupies units in K10, if he goes here and here, let's say these are equivalent stacks. Those are exactly the same units in these stacks. Which is this guy going to fire at? They're equivalent stacks. As a matter of fact, I'm going to clone them. I'm cloning this guy. These guys are the same guy. Same stack. Same modifier, same stack, same leader. You know, all the canteens are half full. Same stack. Which unit is this unit going to fire at? And why? Does he fire to him? Or does he fire to him? He's going to fire. Let's just say we have to fire. We're going to prep fire. We're going to fire. Who do we target? Hi, Tony. Who do we target and why? Remember... These guys are broken. What do we want to do to those guys? Let's say this is part of your plan. What do you want to do to these guys? You want to harass them. We want to harass them. Okay. What's the easiest way to keep harassing them? Keep getting near them, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So if we move up here, let's say we see X, right? We go, you know, three, six. That's the shot we're looking at. Now, does that help your answer? Who are we going to fire at? We're gonna fire at this guy in M10. Yeah. M10, because if even if you pin them, say you don't break them. Let's just say you pin two of them, right? Right. What What did you just do to this well, guy? What's your turn fire going against this guy? Yeah. Yeah. What did you just do to this guy? You just increased the likelihood of him surviving this defensive fire shot by a huge amount. A huge amount. That's going to be a one. What is that range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hex range. LMG is three. This is five, six, seven. You just reduced it from an eight shot to a six shot, at least. If he, assuming he fires everything, that instead instead of an eight even, that's just a six even now. 
you just increased it by a large margin. Now, when he rolls a seven, you're looking at an old morale check. What happens then? He pins. If he rolls it on the eight chart, you roll him one morale check, he breaks. Of course, he could, at this point, he could pretty much route in any direction. He can still route that way, but then you won't be able to DM this guy. And then he, he comes up and then he just, uh, he comes up a turn or two earlier than you wanted him to. You don't have to chase this guy for six turns. You just got to chase him enough that he's kind of out of the battle and then you can kind of make your move to catch up with the entourage to stop their routes. Or to be a pain in the ass for him to... Maybe he keeps a guy back, right? You know, let's say he advances up and uh, he doesn't want any, any, any snazzy enough that he doesn't want, you know, you, this little pain in the ass behind him. Let's just say he keeps... Let's just say he keeps a 4, 6, 7 and an LMG right there. Let's just say he parks him right there. And these guys continue. What did you just do? What did this one unit just do to the Germans? He, he, he forced the Germans to lose two units up here for a number of turns, plus a leader, mind you. Plus a leader. Now he's going to rally. He's coming, he's coming back. He's not going to stay there forever. He's coming back. Unless you're Mark, and then you're going to be rolling nines and tens for rallying, so... <laughs> <laughs> So if you're playing Mark, you just break him once and you're good. <laughs> you're just good. You're done. Yeah. You're done. So, but cowering. Yeah. But what did you do to what? What did you do to the German when he sets up a guy up here? Let's say you can't move any force. I guess if you move, you're gonna die. What did you just do to the German? And these guys continue. You just you just one unit just essentially stopped three Germans from getting to the town because you're not a victory condition. The victory conditions are down the bottom. And if he wants to stop you doing this, if he makes the error of wanting to stop you, or I don't know, maybe maybe the Russians get a bunch of forces. I don't know exactly what the scenario is. But if the Russians can counterattack here, um, he might need to break this unit here um, and, and to get rid of him. Because these guys will be coming. These guys will be coming back. But this takes time. And uh, he has a little bit of time in this scenario. So if you can minimize the time the Germans has, you know, he's now essentially spending three resources for your one that's a win that's a win for us this is a win you don't have to kill them all all you have to do is keep them busy if these guys are not in the town they're not taking any victory conditions you essentially that's the same thing as this guy right here in town on the victory condition let's move into town on the victory conditions keeping these three squads out of the building it's exactly the same thing you just happen not to be in the victory condition building you just have to be way over here you know, these guys aren't here, and guess what? If they go here, they can go to the next one. They can go to the next one. If they're over here, they can't get to any of them. You know, at least quickly. They might have to get there later, but 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 this six firepower can make all the difference, especially if it's an HM or LMG. It can make a lot of difference. That you, there might that might be the one guy that is necessary to cover a road, that is necessary to occupy a building. That is necessary to cut a route path down here in the bottom because the Russians don't have a lot of guys. Yeah, it's pretty. This is pretty damn thin. So since it's so thin, occupying or keeping more guys of out out of the town is essentially how you win. I, I think if the Germans get to the town, it's just game over. I, I pretty much unless the five two sevens aren't. You're not going to pull the five two sevens, and you're not going to put them over here and, and use it for defense for shit. These guys do not go out of the town. They stay in very short range. They might want to look at close combat with a key unit here or there. Um, the 527s do not leave the town. 628s in the open field, they're garbage. Again, just this little stupid move here. You know, is that a risk? Yeah, it's a big risk. I'm sure, it's a big risk. But what's the reward? You know, potentially, you know, if these guys break here, potentially three squads. You know, I mean, this is before. It's a potential. And guess what? If, if even if the Americans or the Germans still pursue that left-hand flank, can he get back to the town? Yeah, he just goes this way. You know, or just or that matter if the Germans are over here, he could go through here. And even if he breaks, let's say he goes here and he breaks, does that hurt us? Not particularly. I mean, he routes forward three hexes, and then if it's his turn, if it's your turn when he breaks, guess what? You're you're going to lose your DM by the time your rally phase comes along. You know, unless one of these Germans over here, uh, you know, takes a machine gun at you. But he's got other targets to worry about. 
and then you just rally hopefully you'll rally on a seven and then you just one two three four five six and now you're kind of, you're you're still kind of get to the town before you know about the same time he does so you know let's say let's say he does pull a couple units right here you know actually you might not want to do that because if you want him to go up and over the hill cost more movement fa movement factors you might not want to entice him to come in your direction considering it's a stone building uh, this is going to be a lot more dangerous than this over here right he's going to get in that building here he might break over here i i, I wouldn't care about that unit i'm i don't care i would throw guys in there and i would throw uh, even if you if you even if you shoot at me you drop four residual firepower i'm still moving other units in there that's going to be a four plus two i'm not worried about a four plus two you know uh, just not and then you just cc the son of a bitch and he dies so that's a risk that you have to take but again that's you know that's something to think about but if your gun's pointing that direction and it, and if you think he's gonna if you think he's going to engage and chase you down you know make him make him throw some units in there <coughs> but yeah this gun this gun's going to be gone in a couple turns and so you just gotta you gotta do your maximum damage early and, and it um, did its work. It yeah. did its work. Yeah, it killed, it killed a king tiger. So at that yeah. point, yeah. you could consider it, I'm good. And anything beyond beyond that could be free. It could be free. You know, if I break three squads, or like I say, 24 chart, a four is a one KIA. Somebody's dying, the rest of them are breaking. And then this guy can go to work. If these units go down here and take this victory location, right? Are the Russians probably going to go run, run over there and go get it? Nope. They can't get there because you're gonna have Germans like in this sort of situation here. You're gonna have tanks. You gotta have all this bullshit going on, right? You gotta have all this bullshit going on in turn five or six, right? So, but guess who could take that? This little bastard coming from behind again. What's that do to the Germans? If he starts entering the town like this, and you've got a victory location here, and you've got to push this way because you've taken a couple casualties because the T thirty four eighty fives. You know, are are making their appearance here. You know, what's this guy gonna do? He's he's got to pay attention to this guy. This guy has value. Now you've got to you got to stick a guy in the building. Are you? If you stick one guy in the building, are you gonna break this guy? Is is, is it? it not. Yeah, not that, that's not a winning scenario there. Yeah. So if if your intent is to break this guy and then maybe like, you know, move a tank behind him so he can't route and die, then guess what? You're occupying a tank. And you're occupying two squads, minimum two squads. That's an eight plus three. That's still hard to hard to beat in one shot, gentlemen. And so you're occupying three units, and one of them's a tank, while this little bastard, well, you know, he doesn't even have a machine gun. These guys are done. So that's two thirds of his little group right here. You know, and guess what you did over here? That that eight zero, and the other guy is still running back. He's still chasing you back in the town. He might be here by now. You know, he might be closer because he moves a little faster than you, of course. You know, he might be in this location. But guess what? He's still in that location and not in that location down here, closer to his objective. Those little things, especially in a scenario like this, especially where he's got to move a large distance, little things like that where you can break a couple units here and there. Again, remember, like in the last couple scenarios where, you know, you got that broken 747, he's at the top of the board, you know, we could throw our eight zero at him, cause that unit loss instantly. He's gone, but we've got to protect our leader because the the at that point the American can actually counterattack their leader. But we don't have to move our our four six sevens and our four four seven out of position. We could still have a decent position covering the same locations we would probably cover anyway. But yet our eight zero is one hundred percent covered, and therefore dissuade the American from Paul possibly making that move and if the American does make that move comes after your 8-0 and they break guess what happens then we chase those bastards down or you know keep keep one guy chases them down keeps them DM and the other guys move off to the other side of the of the of the um, map to help the other to, to help their their you know their uh their comrades on the opposite side of the map to keep the Americans from coming that way Pretty good. You're gonna break though, but you're gonna have eight plus one, but you're slowing him down. Yeah, I think we're. I ended up putting him in J10. Is where he ended up, for what yeah. it's worth. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Maybe I like K1 a little better. You're probably right, but yeah. but he actually did a good job. 
Scott ends up kind of charging those woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I lay, I lay down. So I think that's a. It's, it's the infamous one residual fire. Yeah. <laughs> with his last shot, he cowers and leaves one residual yeah, that, fire in that's J. Squad, was it? it J ten or J nine? And then what? Did, how many squads and leader broke there, Scott? Oh yeah. my god. It was. I mean, it, was it was ugly. Yeah. It was like yeah. It's so it's the one, the one down two that gets you. Oh my god, that's that's funny. That is funny. But yeah, yeah. it was not. It was not funny. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean here here you're looking for the you're looking for the German to push forward, knowing that he's got to move forward anyway, right? So you're looking at a four even, and then a then a subsequent shot like on somebody moving up. Um, yeah, I guess I wanted to cover down that road too. Maybe that wasn't the wisest choice because you know at that no, point no, if the not Germans are going to go swing way, way wide across that. Maybe you just let them and say, hey, if you want to swing that far and go around that far hill, you're you're not going to have enough time yeah. to make a difference anyway. Well, so, I mean, yeah, you might have been, yeah, yeah. Well, that that guarantees you that guarantees you a, a, again yeah. another open shot. Again, this is this is where you wanted to put him, and um, again, if if you wanted to to break some units before he gets into this this position here where now he does have a sight on your gun you know that that's that's not a problem shoot those sons of bitches but um uh, again the, the german probably has to be aggressive and come after you uh to get in that location to put pressure on him and uh if you wanted to you either take the shot early like again the four minus two is essentially the same thing as the eight chart it's essentially the same thing as the eight chart if you anticipate the german uh just like moving up here and then advance phasing in here you know, you know, what did you do? Did Was that a fail? Uh, you might consider it a fail, but you, you stop the advance phase after he breaks you from going right here. That's one more hex, and sometimes that might make it. Why does it pick him up? It should not pick him up. I do not have it selected to pick up all units. Um, but yeah, if you anticipate him slowing up, but that, again, that slows him by another hex. And the same thing, like if you go here and you break a couple guys, you break one guy and subsequently just fire and break another guy. I don't know if he final, but um, if he gives you the opportunity, you might, especially if it's a minor shot. He didn't. He didn't need to. It just the residual took everybody oh. out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that one little uh, that machine gun that's kind of continuing. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Someone's feeding him some flames, but but yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. The one twenty two can do a lot of damage. And I, yeah, I was surprised by that gun. That 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 surprised, especially its effectiveness against infantry. That thing's vicious. Yeah, uh, it's big. And rate of fire that, one. That's, that's like just stupid. Yeah. That's just stupid. I mean, if uh, if you get if if you get that lucky shot and you blow like one guy up here and you get a rate of fire, then my heart just sinks as a German. If I if I move my four six eight into here and you blow the shit out of this guy if you turn it and you get rate of fire, it's like oh, great. You know, I just you know I'm just gonna throw more units to the, to the now he's now he's, he's looking that direction and now he's certainly gonna blow the shit out of the rest of the guys. So a rate of fire in a gun like that is really nasty to look at. Oh, simple, even a simple one. You know, no rate of fire, no problem. You just he just fires and they just go outside his covered arc and he can't do shit. He can't do shit. You gotta love a weapon that leaves a twelve residual. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Or shoots on the area target type with a twelve firepower. You know. Yeah. That's pretty stupid. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's rough. It's I think it's you know, Russians don't have a lot of guys, but you know, um, I don't know. This, this is just a rough-looking scenario, to be honest with you. Uh, especially since the Germans are coming and just in full force. Uh, I don't know what you do with that. You just try and delay it as much as possible, pick out a couple guys, and whittle them down. It's sort of like the Japanese at this point. You just whittle down the Japanese, and hopefully there won't be much left of him by the time he gets there. Any other comments, gentlemen? Any other questions like Game of the Month? How are you guys Game of the Month going? The people that are that are involved in it? Um is that working out? Is it? Is you guys having a good time at it? Things like that. Really like the scenario. Uh, second time I've played it, uh, but uh, first time as an attacker, and uh, it, uh, it, it it's a real good scenario. Cool, cool. Yeah, I didn't. It just it, it the just the like I say the variety of the guns is essentially the main reason I got it. Is you have every type of gun in there. Uh, I didn't know and it was it was balanced on. You had actually a lot of decent number of plays, I think. And so I'm glad it's kind of working out for you guys. I was watching um, a couple of gentlemen play the other day, about last week sometime, and uh, it looked pretty rough on the Brits. And in the beginning, he was going coming forward, and he took a couple of hard shots, and the Germans were just kind of like, 
Uh, you're not going to get a shot at me, and they were kind of like skulking most of the time. And it looked, it looked pretty tough. You know, I didn't, I, I, I was not, I was not envying the British precision or their Canadians or whoever the hell they are, free French. Free French. I was not, I was not envying their position. Uh, they have to take risks later on, and I'm not sure how it ended up. Hopefully, the the, the log file is up there, but, but, um, but it looked pretty good. Have the free French won any? Yeah, has anybody won with the free French? I've looked at a few logs, but most of the ones I've looked I at, did. Uh, the Germans have won. Okay, cool, cool. So somebody did pull it out. Nice. Good deal. Good deal. Well, that, which is good. So hopefully, you know, at least we have a, you know, both sides winning in that particular scenario. So we can look at what went well with the win for at least for the free French side and what went well with the Germans when they won. And uh, what kind of, maybe we could look at this, try and find out what a turning point could have been uh, in those particular scenarios, um, which uh, altered the, uh, altered the outcome between, you know, a win or a loss. So, because it's a tight board, it looks like a really tight board. It's, I'm really interested in, in burning through those, and so I'll probably do that at the end of next week, for the for the beginning of the month. But um, paper scissors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. All right, thank you so much, gentlemen, and uh, we'll we'll catch you next time. All right. Good night. Thank you. All right, Take care. Later, guys.